I don't usually talk about my divorce, but I will say this. That when you have children, the only thing worse than getting divorced is getting an incurable disease and then getting divorced. <laughs> in any case, the year is 1986. AIDS and herpes are in full bloom. And at this incredible point in time when a woman wouldn't shake hands with you without wearing a wetsuit, I'm single. <laughs> the sexual revolution passed me by. I wasn't even issued a uniform. <laughs> I was married while women threw their bras in the air and adopted the morals of Caligula on ecstasy. <laughs> They'd sleep with anyone. Have you ever seen the guys who were at Woodstock? It looked like a homeless shelter. <laughs> a woman's requirements were he had to have a face. <laughs> Well, it took me 18 years, and I have come to the conclusion that I know what women want. They want everything. <laughs> they want a career. They want a boyfriend. They want a husband. They want beauty, just a hint of ugliness. They want stability, drama, spontaneity, security, excitement, attention, sensitivity, roughness, loyalty, indifference, children, travel, jewelry, art, music, money, cars, causes, yoga, mystery, strength, fame, humility, vulnerability, sincerity, danger, a kiss on the cheek, and a smack on the ass. They don't want a man, they want a novel. from one relationship to another, some lasting two years, some lasting two hours. I broke up with women, and women broke up with me. The most significant maniac I was obsessed with <laughs> was an artist who never made money with her paintings and gave new meanings to the word delusional. <laughs> She actually had the balls to tell me that she was going to start acting classes so she'd have something to fall back on. <laughs> this was a woman, by the way, who could have changed history with her acting. Because if she were acting in Ford's theater, John Wilkes Booth would have shot her instead of <laughs> She was into astrology, tarot cards, and past lives. She chanted, channeled, and howled at the moon. She was an adorable, sexy idiot who depended on more magic in her life than Harry Potter. I drove to see her one day, hoping to get what she gave the least, which was sex. Her apartment was boiling. She was sitting on a couch, her blonde hair hanging like wet strings on her face, from the sweat derived from sitting on a couch in a boiling apartment. <laughs> Jeez, it's boiling in here, I said. She was baking a potato and had to use the oven. Well, the oven, being a hundred years old, baked the whole apartment while it baked the potato. I would have said eat something else, but in addition to her intestinal problems, she was also a vegetarian. She only ate things like nuts and roots. She had the diet of a gopher and wondered why she had no get up and go. <laughs> but for whatever reason, sex with her was transcendent. <laughs> whatever the cost, getting into that place where she'd say, fuck me, was worth it. <laughs> you need a microwave, I stated. Let's go. <laughs> brightened and shed some potential light on my sexual thoughts. I took her to a circuit city and proudly walked over to the microwave aisle. I felt a sigh of relief as I saw there was a microwave there for only 87 bucks. I looked for my girlfriend and she was down at the other end of the aisle. The $500 end of the aisle. I was in the worst possible relationship scenario. I'm either a cheap bastard because I got her a piece of shit, you'll never get a blowjob from me, microwave. <laughs> or I'm a pathetic moron who gives up the 500 just to get her in bed. 
Ten minutes later, we're in her apartment with the best microwave ever to bake a potato. <laughs> It is not till I'm driving home that I realize I don't have a microwave. <laughs> when you're single, you have single friends. So you live not only your singleness, but your friends also. I have seen women play with men with the cruelty of a cat playing with a one-legged grasshopper. <laughs> I found that if you let a woman nibble on your toes, eventually she will eat your feet. <laughs> now I've tried to go through periods of celibacy, both self-imposed and sometimes just out of my own temporary loss of mojo. <laughs> now if you ever lost your mojo, you know what I mean. Nothing works and eventually even you lose your desire to be with yourself. <laughs> Since being single, I really don't know if I have been in love, but I certainly have been in lust, I've been in ridiculous, <laughs> in stupid, in desperate, and certainly in inappropriate. <laughs> it is like an incurable disease that preys on the most damaged part of my being. I know a man who dated three women in one year, and every one of them attempted suicide. <laughs> Did he cause them to try to kill themselves? <laughs> or was he attracted to that little light in their eye that screamed out, hi, I'm nuts. <laughs> but you're gonna love fucking me. <laughs> and during one of my down periods, I took up hobbies to try to keep myself busy in between raising my children and working. Another friend of mine was a hunter. He tried to get me to go dove hunting in Arizona. Now, I'm not a big hunter, I, I didn't understand it, but he almost got misty-eyed as he told me how he would shoot a dove with a 12-gauge shotgun, how he held the dying bird in his hand, and he said, there I was, holding this dove, which trembled and then went still in my hand. The blood, the smell of the gunpowder, the cold rain, and the life leaving the feathered body, I'm telling you, he sighed, it just doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> I looked at him and said, you need to get your dick sucked. <laughs> Resign myself to the fact that women are just as messed up as I am. I figured out that for now, if I'm going to be lonely, I'd rather be alone. <laughs> I have these friends who've been married for 30 years, and I wonder what's their secret. Well, I, I tell you what it is. They like each other. They actually like each other. They are the best of friends, and they love hanging around each other. Do they make women like that anymore? I mean, where are the women who will hold you in the middle of the night when you just got bad news and kiss you and cry with you and love you as you face the unknown together? <laughs>